Hi everyone, welcome to Restoration Breakdown. For today's exercise, we have an interesting project because this is a color cleanup procedure. The main subject here is this 35 millimeter movie. As you probably will see, we have a lot of artifacts, especially you have a lot of blue dots and a lot of yellow markings. I'm gonna exemplify better that by showing you each of the different channels. If I show you the red channel, it's quite clean. I mean, it has a bit of dust, but okay. If I show you the green channel, okay, same story. Nothing really out of the ordinary, a couple of dust here and there. But the main issue that you're going to see and that we are going and trying to fix in this particular subject is going to be the blue channel. Because the blue channel has everything. The grain obviously is way heavier. It has way more artifacts and it has that ghosting from the previous frame. The line that is going down is really slow. And you can see that we have a complete after image of the lady here. So uh, what's the idea? The reason that I'm doing this in Resolve at the moment is not that the process that I'm going to do is unique to Resolve. Originally, the process that I'm going to do, I did it for a client in Phoenix. But the reason that I'm doing Resolve is that it's a bit more straightforward and clear. And it's better for me to exemplify the procedure here than, than in Phoenix. But this could apply to everything. I mean, you could do the same same procedure that I'm going to do here. You could do it in Scratch. You can do it in Baselight. You can do it in Nuke. You can do it in um, whatever. I, I mean... Also Premiere could be uh, After Effects as well, I suppose. What's the idea? This is the blue channel, but let's see. If you see the other channels, I mean, there is like some information that can be useful for cleaning up the blue channel. So something that I want you to realize and something that when you start working in restoration, you start being more aware of is that color is not really color. Color in the digital world is not really represented as color but it's a sum of three discrete grayscale channels so you have three grayscale channels that exemplify the values from 0 to 100 from the red from the green and the blue those three individual channels when they set up the value then you get color at the end so the software mix them up and you get color but one of the advantages of having those discrete grayscale channels is that you can do grayscale operations with them. Let's say I want to take the brightest pixels of the green channel and pass them through to the blue channel so we can clean this part, this specific part here in the middle where I don't want any type of ghosting or whatever. So we can do that. And it is a really straight up process. So the next structure that I have set up here is really nothing fancy. Don't be afraid of this. The idea is we do a splitter combiner. A splitter combiner is just a node that's going to split the three different channels in different parts. We have the red here, we have the green here, and then we have the blue here. So besides that, we can also reuse these three channels because everything that you take out of these places is going to be the red, the green, and the blue. So you can reuse this however you like it. I'm going to pass through the red. I'm going to pass through the green as well. But I'm going to take the green channel again. And I'm going to feed it to a composite node. And I'm going to set this composite load to lighten. The idea is I want to use those pixels that are brighter to fill those pixels that are darker in the blue channel. And the green channel is going to help me with that. I'm going to reset this for a bit so you can see what is the original intent here. So here what you have is that if you go straight for the lighting mode without doing any type of adjustment, you're going to see a change. The only issue that this becomes a dual tone picture. So you're basically getting rid of the blue channel. You are basically replacing most, if not all, of the blue channel for the green channel information, which in some cases may be beneficial, especially if the blue channel is completely out of information. I mean, if this was the case, I could have done that. But I want you to notice something. If we go again full screen, and then I show you the original. If you see on the sweater of the girl, we have a slight difference between the green and the yellow. The sweater is pretty different. The face may be similar. The door may be similar. Even some of the, the background may be similar. But you know, there is a slight bit of information yet available on the blue channel. So it's our duty to save that information. We cannot discard that information altogether. In order for us to save that information, we need to adjust the, the green channel 
So we can only get the brighter parts, but the darker parts remain from the blue channel. That's the adjustment that I'm doing here. I'm gonna take this note, I'm gonna do a lift operation, then I'm gonna reduce until I see that the sweater, I wanna be mostly careful about the sweater. I want the sweater to remain being that grayish tone. And then obviously when we darken that image, then the lighting is gonna take more of the blue channel. So we're gonna contract that doing a gain operation here on the next note. I try to separate these two operations in different notes because I like the result being the one that is feeding to the gain. I don't want doing that to the same source. And that's the way that I work. Maybe it works for you having those on the same note, but I prefer to keep them separated. Then I do the lighting here until I find it correct. And then I can go back and maybe recover a bit more. And then you can start playing and whatever until you find the exact place that for you works. Yeah, for me, I'm gonna go back to my original settings. I think it was somewhere around here. This is the lift operation that we did there and this is the gain operation. It may increase the contrast a bit or a bit too much maybe for your taste, but in the end it's gonna give you a cleaner picture on the background. But it really depends on you. My main purpose here is to clean the highlights of the blue channel. This is the first step, cleaning the highlights of the blue channel. We are not dealing yet with a lot of those scratches or blue dust or whatever, or blue stains that you seen at the beginning. We are not dealing with that at the moment. We're only dealing with that after image that is going up and down that is mostly gonna be fixed by the lighting. So we are going to deal with that. Okay, after that operation, we have cleaned the image. We don't have the after image anymore. I mean, we still have a lot of those blue stains, obviously, but the main problem that we have with this ghosting artifact here on the wall, it's mostly gone. You can see here our DY, and then we are going from this to this. For me, that's okay. Now that we have dealt with the brightest part of the image, let's start cleaning up the darkest part of the blue channel. So again, we're gonna take this result and then we're gonna do another operation. Same idea here, same structure. This is where we were, but now, we are doing another operation and instead of using the green channel again we're gonna use the red channel why we are using the red channel to clean up those blue artifacts i'm gonna show you exactly why because if you see the original pictures we have obviously this is the red this is the green and this is the blue you see here the red channel has like a black border around those places where the blue splotches are located because the green still has those splotches here i mean this is a, a bright line obviously the blue channel has a lot more but you can still see a lot of that information here on the on the green channel so it's not gonna be that useful the one that's gonna be most useful for cleaning that is gonna be the red channel we're gonna do the other type of operation instead of doing a light we're gonna do a darken operation here and we're just gonna lower the gain a bit of the red channel. So I'm gonna reset this so I can show you properly and I'm gonna enable this. And then, I mean, by default it's doing a great job. We just need to adjust so we can get a more normal color. So let me go to a place where I know that it's gonna be working better. Maybe here. And now that you can see that there is like a slight shift in the color, we may want to fix that as well. This is how the blue channel was originally, and this is what we are doing now. We are adjusting, so all that junk, all those issues disappear. I think my original setting was around here. We are going from this to this. So the result is quite jarring, right? And I can show you what we are doing. I mean, it's not completely disappearing because it's present in two of the three channels. So we cannot completely disappear this, but it doesn't have that color anymore. It doesn't have that extreme color anymore. And if you see, we have retained more or less the same information from the shirt. If we go back to the original picture here, the shirt remains the same color. And if you see his hand as well, he had like one of those biggest ones here. 
it's completely gone and now we have a mostly homogenized picture okay so let's say you are pretty content so what we did what will be the next step the next step that i will probably do is called a color recovery process so if you notice here going back between the original and this picture the shirt of the guy used to be this cyanish greenish but now it become completely green okay so let's say we can fix that with a selection or whatever i mean you could but since we are doing this why not keep doing this because we are working with the channels we're playing with the channels let's keep playing with the channel there's no need to start doing masks or whatever also we want this to be as vanilla as possible we want to be as old school as possible the next step will be the color recovery process the color recovery process is mostly gonna be using the green channel information again but this time we are just gonna get those parts that are gonna give us that same type of hue that we had at the beginning we are doing a lighting we are just gonna get those higher parts of the picture and we are doing a slight gain reduction so we can keep the original intent of the picture we are getting back that original color of the shirt so something like that that's the main idea here we just want to recover a bit of the color of the shirt this is the final step the color recovery process i mean we already cleaned the picture so why we are doing this adjustment at the end because by this point we don't have any of those blue streaks anymore we don't have any of those ghosting anymore so we can do whatever we want with the picture because we have a, a clean picture now so we can recover those values that we may have lost in the process this is the main idea behind this whole procedure and i'm gonna show you next the comparison in the squad journey you can see here i can show you a before and after here and you can see what we are doing and this is only playing with channels we are not doing anything else but playing with channels so i am applying the same setting for all the shots some of the shots may need some different adjustments as you can see here her sweater is suffering a bit so we might need to change some of the settings in this particular shot but for the most part it can be used for everything at the same time you can see here the changes this is the the most interesting one because if we go only to the blue channel you can see it here this is the blue channel before and this is the blue channel after yeah quite interesting right and you can adjust this as well however you like it and we haven't used any type of plugins we haven't used any type of dvo we haven't used any type of special things this is a simple old school color operation using the channels as grayscale images combining and making use of them as well so I'm gonna show you, this is the same procedure that we will do in Phoenix. The only issue that you need to be aware in Phoenix or Lucoda is that you cannot use a composition as part of another composition. So you need to have a lot of intermediate renders between every single step. Let's say the first step will be to do a lighting of the blue channel. So the first step doing the lighting like we did before. Let me show you RTY, RTY. And then same thing, we are cleaning the blue channel, darken of the blue channel as well. And then same thing, we are darkening the blue channel so we get rid of all that crap, that noise. And then a little color recovery so we can get back of some of the information that we lost. Same thing here as well. And finally we have the, the channel combined. And it's the same thing, if we compare the blue channel, we completely clean up the blue channel. So the color may have switched, this became a bit more yellowish. I may need to adjust the darken settings here so it, it can become the same one that we have resolved. But this is a matter of preference because the result is the same. We have cleaned both the light parts and the dark parts. Everything else is just a matter of just tweaking. Just normal, straightforward color operations. But this is the idea. Hopefully you like this and I can do more of these breakdowns in the future. And I want to see this if you have some interesting footage that you have a lot of issues with and you want to send it to me so I can take a look at it. I'm always open to that. I'm not going to charge you anything. It's, it's going to see a single clip and maybe I can do a video about it as well. So it's a win-win for everyone. So thank you for everything and bye-bye.